like an 18th century Hells Angel. He dressed head to toe in black with a shock of coarse jet black hair. All right, mate. Now, everyone loves a good swashbuckling pirate epic, eh? Yeah, but it's all warmy arties and shiver me timbers, matey. Oh, do me a favour. Pirates were proper mean geezers, not panto dames. Listen up. In 1717, a horrible piece of work, Benjamin Hornigold, had a last hurrah ambushing a 300-ton French slave ship, La Concorde, on the Caribbean Sea. Hanging up his pirate boots, he hands over control to his first mate, Mr. Edward Teach. You might know him better as Blackbeard. Now, we're talking nasty. Like an 18th century hell's angel, he dressed head to toe in black with a shock of coarse jet black hair and a beard that stretched right up to his eyeballs, twisted into tails. Always ready for a rumble, the geezer was permanently armed with knives and a huge cutlass in his belt and three loaded pistols in holsters slung over his chest. This was six foot two inches of pure trouble. Oh, God, it's the missus again. I'm working, love. So now Blackbeard was top sea dog. He wanted to pimp his new flagship right up. He renamed it Queen Anne's Revenge. Double the amount of her cannons, making it a 40-gun war machine and hoisted his own flag of a skeleton stabbing a spear into a heart. Classic. This hairy maniac loved that boat so much that it was a romantic setting for 13 of his 14 wedding days. How sweet. But apparently, when he heard one of his ladies had given a ring to some other sailor, he hunted the chump down chopped off the appendage with a ring on it and delivered it back in a pretty box to his damsel. What an utter nutter. Oh, come on, you burk. Now, with a few more ships in tow, Blackbeard's fleet was the scourge of the seas for two years and this English boy enjoyed giving a British Navy a good kick in. HMS Great Allen sunk. HMS Scarborough blown to bits. The ship Adventure captured and its crew turned into pirates. To scare the living scurvy out of his foes in battle, he'd pop a few hemp ropes under his hat and set them alight so he looked like a big smoking ball of bonkers. This was not the kind of bloke you'd ask round for your Sunday lunch. But he was clever too, cutting a deal with the governor of North Carolina, Charles Eden, who turned a blind eye to Blackbeard's high jinks on the high seas as long as he handed over a portion of his booty in exchange. Now, this weren't usually gold coins and rubies. Nah, it was proper <laughs> currency like sugar, cocoa and cotton. See, if pirates had cash, they spent it when they got ashore. Forget about that buried treasure lot you've heard about. Pirates didn't really go in for retirement plans. <laughs> Old Blackbeard finally annoyed one too many bigwigs when his crew ransacked the port of Charleston, South Carolina, and a bounty was stuck on his head. Outmanned and outgunned by two British ships, he went down fighting and had that big old head walloped off by a naval blade and plonked on the brow of a ship. End of pirate. Now, black and white beard here, uh, fancy's knocking off for the day. <laughs> so, where do you want me to drop anchor for you? If you want to hear more of this interesting malarkey, then don't be a numpty and subscribe here now. <laughs>